The script manager control is the first type of control you'll need to add into a page if you want to add AJAX functionality and use ASP.NET AJAX controls such as the update panel, the timer, and the others that we talked about in the last section. Well, the script manager is responsible for quite a bit. You can kind of think of it as the boss on a job. You have your different workers that perform their different functionality, but ultimately you need to coordinate that to make sure that the job gets done. Well, that's what the script manager does. The script manager is responsible for loading the necessary scripts that are needed to make AJAX calls, and it can also be used to load even custom scripts. So not only can you use it to load Microsoft's behind the scenes scripts that they use with these server controls, but you can also use it to load something like a validation script that you might have written. Now you can also load that of course using the standard script tag, but this is another option that's available. It also can be used to call backend services and generate proxy scripts. So if you had for instance a ASP.NET web service that you wanted to call that returns JSON data, then you could use the script manager control to generate some script, some JavaScript on the client side that you could use to call that service and it can do a few other things as well. It supports debug and release versions of scripts so when it loads either your own custom scripts or Microsoft scripts it can load those as debug or release versions. A debug version would typically be one where all the white space and tabs and, and formatting have been left in the script so it's very easy to read and debug. A release version of a script typically has all of the formatting stripped out. All the white space that isn't needed is gone and that conserves on the bandwidth and makes the script load faster. So you can switch between those using the script manager control. And then finally as mentioned it's really the boss so it coordinates all the asynchronous operations. You might have multiple AJAX controls on a page such as the update panel and you might have multiple update panels that make requests back to a server to get data. Well, the script manager coordinates all those different calls and makes sure everything works properly. Now you can drag a script manager control onto your page and we can either put it into a page if only the one page needs AJAX functionality or in situations where an entire site and many pages might need AJAX features then we can drag a script manager into the master page. Now dragging and dropping it's not going to gain you a whole lot because you can see this is all you need to add at a minimum. So we need to add ASP script manager ID equals whatever you want to call it and then the standard run as server. So it's just like a normal ASP.NET server control. By adding that though it does quite a bit of work behind the scenes for you to load the necessary AJAX scripts that might be used. Now it has an interesting property on it. Normally when you have a non AJAX enabled page and a button is clicked you'll have a, a typical standard post back and you could say in the code behind in something like the page load you could say if page dot is post back then let's do something special such as call a database. Well sometimes you might want to know the difference between a regular post back because you could have a form on the page that does regular postbacks and you might even mix that with AJAX calls, partial page postbacks or partial, partial page updates. Well you can see here the script manager, SM was the ID from the last section we just talked about and you'll see that it has this is in async postback. Is in async postback simply checks are we in a AJAX callback type of scenario and then we can do uh, something special if we wanted based upon the fact that we're doing an AJAX call and that would be useful in cases where you might have both potentially a regular one and an AJAX one. Now another thing you can do that's very I found it very useful for debugging purposes is with an AJAX call because the entire screen doesn't load if there's an error on the server side Normally, with regular postbacks, ASP.NET would show kind of a yellowish red type screen with the error message and the stack trace and other information. Well, that doesn't happen when you're doing AJAX because we're not reloading the entire page. So what will happen is you might see a little error, but you're not going to see the entire error page. In fact, oftentimes you won't see anything of use. So what I'll do in those situations is if something's not working as expected, I'll go in and first make sure that everything works with normal postbacks. 
And the way to do that is simply set enable partial rendering to false. And what that does is now your partial page postbacks are disabled and it's as if you're not using the Ajax controls and the Ajax scripts that get loaded by the script manager. And so in that particular case, now we can run the page. If we get an error, .NET will actually show the real error message. Versus if you're doing Ajax, it kind of hides that behind the scenes and you'd have to use some other tools to view the HTTP traffic. So this is a really nice little trick you can do to easily Ajax enable or disable uh, your script manager. And a little simple example shown here, uh, when a page initializes, we might go in and have some custom method that we call supports XML HTTP. If it doesn't support uh, the XML HTTP object, maybe it's a really old browser or something, then we could simply say let's disable partial page rendering. and We'll set that to false and now it'll be as if there were no Ajax functionality built in the page. So that's a quick look at some of the properties and the way that the script manager is used and you can see it's a very very simple control just to get it started and going. So now let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with it. Let's take a look at how we can use the ASP.NET Ajax script manager control. So to get started I'm going to come in and create a new project and I'm just going to create an empty ASP.NET web application and we'll call this Ajax enabled site. Okay so this will just give us a web.config file. I'll right click and we'll add a new item. We'll select a web form and we'll just call this default.aspx. Now the first thing we'd have to do if we want to Ajax enable this page is we need to go in and add a script manager control. Now if, as mentioned earlier, you had multiple pages you want to Ajax enable, then the best place to put the script manager control would actually be the master page. But in this simple example, we'll put it right here. So I'm going to switch to design view. We'll come over to the toolbox. I'm going to shrink up some of our standard tools here. And you'll notice we have this Ajax extension section. And here's the controls I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to drag a script manager on and you'll see it's a non-visual control. We'll get something in the design time viewer here but at runtime you don't see anything. It's just a behind the scenes class that as I mentioned acts as kind of like the boss, runs, make sure all the children on the page that are Ajax controls are doing the thing. So if we switch back to source view, I'm going to change the ID to just SM and you can see it didn't do much at this point. Now if we run it though, there's actually some script that's going to be added. Now we won't see anything in the page because we don't have anything yet, but if we right click and view source, even at this point, you'll see first off that there's some uh, different script tags that are loaded. Now some of these relate to other things like handling postback operations, but others are loaded by the script manager. You'll also see a little fragment of JavaScript here that references sys.webforms page request manager. Page Request Manager is actually a client-side JavaScript class and the script manager automatically loads the script that handles and uses the Page Request Manager, defines it, and then it adds this script to actually initialize it for the script manager in the form and then we can now work with it and use other controls like the update panel that we'll see coming up in the next sections. So that's what it's done by default. Now, this would be a pretty boring demo if that's all I did um, because that's really all you do to get started but I mentioned in addition to loading its scripts such as the one that has the page request manager you can also use it to load your own scripts plus it adds a nice little function to know about so what I'm going to do is add in a custom script so I'm going to make a folder and we'll just call this scripts and then we'll add a JavaScript file into this and I'll just call this custom.js and let's say that we want to add a function called show message which takes a message and then we want to call show message and pass something alright now for this demo I'm just going to do an alert pretty basic. So what will happen is when this loads it will call show message, it will pass in hello Ajax and then we'll show that in the alert. Now I could come up into the head section 
and we could add a script with the source attribute. But I'm going to demonstrate how we can use the script manager. So let me go back to here and show you some of the properties. All right, so a couple things to run through. You'll notice that up top, let me switch to alphabetical here, that we have a couple things related to errors. If there's an async postback error, uh, what do we want the message to be? Uh, postback timeout, when it's doing an AJAX request, how long should it last? And then moving on down, you'll notice that we can do enable partial rendering that I mentioned earlier. Some other, quite a few other things we can do as well, but the one I want to point out is the scripts. So scripts allow us to reference a custom script, and we can come in, I can add a new script reference, it's called, and then give it the path to our script. So I'm going to say start at the root, which is tilde slash, go to scripts, and then go to custom.js. Now what that just did is it's going to use the script manager to actually load our custom scripts. And the benefit is that it'll load these in the proper order that you want, plus it'll handle a particularly painful case, which is knowing when has the page and the different controls in the page actually loaded and when are they available. Okay, so if we run this as is, we shouldn't have any problems because we're just popping up a message box. So it should show us, and there we go, we get hello Ajax. Nothing big. But let's change that up. Let's come down and we'll add, say, a span tag with an output uh, span ID. And now let's change this to go find that, and we'll show hello Ajax in that span. So we'll come in and first find the span. We'll use the standard document.getElementById. And then we'll say span.innerHTML equals the message. Okay, now the challenge is when you're trying to reference a control that might not have been loaded yet and you're using custom scripts, you know, it's very important, of course, that this span, output span, is already loaded with our page. Well, the script manager is not going to help you out much there because it's going to load, you'll see it's on top of this. Now we could move things around and make sure this script is loaded last, but I'll show you a nice little addition that just by adding the script manager you can add this very easily and be cross-browser. Okay, and that is, if I show message right now, you'll see we should get an error. So let me run this. And you'll see it says we're unable to set the value of the property inner HTML because the span object is null or undefined. And that's accurate because the script's running before the span has actually been loaded. Well, the script manager loads some scripts I mentioned, and it ha adds a nice little handy function that works cross-browser called page load. Kind of like the page load with code behind files. Now, this is available and called once everything in the page is ready to go. So we can simply say, when the page is loaded, let's go ahead and show this hello Ajax message which now the span should be ready to go. So we'll come into here, we'll view in browser, and you'll see now it works. So that's a nice thing that the script manager adds for us, that if you're using custom scripts and want to be cross-browser and not worry about different onload uh, events that fire across different browsers, this one works well in different browsers and it's part of, it's part of the ASP.NET Ajax library. Now on the server side, if we were making a async postback or what we call a partial page postback then we can do as I showed earlier we could say if our script manager uh, is in async postback then we might want to load some data so let's pretend that we had this uh, load data method and that might update, let's say we had a data grid or something that was triggered using an async postback. So now we could call load data. Now this would only get called if we're in an async postback. And that's very different than the following. This is the standard ASP.NET is postback. That would be called if we're not in an Ajax type call versus the script managers is an async postback of course gets called if we are in an Ajax call. So I'm not going to actually run that one in this case but I do want to point out that that is available on the server side if you need to know when an Ajax call is being made. 
All right, so that is a quick look at how easy it is to get started with the script manager and one of the things it can do, which is adding your own custom script references, as well as how we can use the page load that the script manager makes available to us.